Hello, I'm Hal Lublin. And I'm Mark Gagliardi. Since the dawn of humanity, one issue has gone unsettled. With the fate of the world in the balance, we're here to settle once and for all. Best buffet food. That's right. Don't worry, everyone. We got this. Podcasts should have a theme song. Podcasts should not have a theme song. Yes, they should. No, they shouldn't. They sound good. Yeah, but people are just going to skip past it. Hmm. You know what? You're right. We got this. Hal, have you started going back to buffets yet? Not interested. I did go. <laughs> to I'm start interested. an episode with I'm not, not interested. Listen, I have enough buffet experience. Yeah. I've been to buffets, been to smorgasbord. Sure. I've been to serve your own, make your own. I've done all of it. I've so you've been, you've been to Siomios? I'm like the age of Adeline or Adelaide, whatever that movie's called. What is the age it's of like Adelaide? Adelaide? It's like she, I don't know. She gets some sickness where she doesn't age. Like, oh. a, I don't know, like a leprechaun punches her or something. I don't remember what happens in that movie. I've only seen the very end. Man, that's way different than the sickness I got from a leprechaun. Right? <laughs> By the way, punch uh, me. how's your foot? <laughs> my foot yeah you have leprechaun foot right i do <laughs> sorry yeah i was like for a second i thought this was otr and you were like hey real quick how's your foot because i did <laughs> i did actually drop something on my foot the other day and oh, i was like did? oh my gosh thank you for asking it's actually what did you better drop? what did you drop on your foot i was well we've been moving so much stuff around it was just a box but it hit you know like you know that spot on the top of your foot that's just bones and nerves yes yes yeah i dropped a thing on the bones and nerves part Oh, yeah, heavy? not fun. Heavy, yeah. Sorry. How you walk, you, you gotta, you gotta get a hitch in your giddy up right now. Listen, boo, I always got a hitch in my giddy up, but uh, I got a glitch <laughs> you, in my giddy up now. <laughs> you have hips like a beagle; they're just displaced. <laughs> the answer is, I'm not going back to buffets. I did no. go to the greatest Mongolian barbecue place, yeah, in the world. Okay. Which is Big Walk in Manhattan Beach, California. I went there recently. Off hours, because I will only go off hours. Do you get to make your bowl that you're, yes. that they put on the thing? Did I never take you there? Do you do the meat smash down? Didn't I teach you that move? Uh, come on, man. Look, I was a kid who ate heartily. No yeah. one had to teach me that okay. move. Of course, yeah. of course. Frozen rolled up meat. Get out of here with that. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. They make them like, they're like toilet paper tubes of chicken. And like, I'm yeah. going to be fooled to go, Oh, I guess three of these are enough. No. Yeah. I'm getting my money's worth. Cause I'm not, you say all you can eat. I get it. I'm coming up once. I'm coming yeah. up once making one big plate and then I'm going to eat it and I'm going to leave quickly. I don't need to stay there and hang out. No. This isn't pulp fiction. We're not going to have a whole conversation. No. You know what you do? Here's meat. the trick. Take a potato masher mm -hmm. and just Bring keep it in your you. back yeah. pocket. Bring a potato yeah. masher with you in your back pocket and just smash all that meat down. Wash the salmonella off of it before you throw it on the passenger seat of your car when you're leaving the mall. But uh, yeah. make sure that you bring that with you. So much easier than the giant hydraulic press I carry around with me. Oh, yeah. Though hydraulic press videos are way better than potato masher videos on yeah. TikTok. Are you on hydraulic press TikTok? Oh, for sure. For years. Since 2020. Yeah. Have you seen the dancer who does her versions of hydraulic press TikTok? No. She's wonderful. Just look up hydraulic press dancer on TikTok. Do yourself a favor. She's she's an interpretive dancer who is very funny and has recorded her versions of all of those great hydraulic press videos. Can I tell you a thing that I heard about that I'm yeah. like that? Do you think let me ask you this cuz my first thought yeah. was, well then that place no longer qualifies as a buffet. Oh, okay. Or is it not as an all you can eat buffet? Certainly. Okay. If everything else, and we're going to get to this one specific item in a minute, mm -hmm. if everything else in the buffet, now this might be a thing that puts this item in the upper echelon. Okay. I just heard about this. If you go to the buffet, obviously you're going to load up on the king crab legs, right? Sure. Here's the thing. There's a buffet here in town that you get two tickets and that's all you get for the king crab leg station. They're like, you can have as much as you want, all you can eat at the buffet, except this one item, which we give you tickets for. And you get two tickets. Oh, yeah. That's not all you can eat. That's a lot. That's not all I you can eat them. buffet. Yeah. Yeah. You know what? We should sue them. I We should. But we should also show up in the restaurant when they give it go, I've got two tickets to snow crab legs. <laughs> because it's too perfect. It fits the meter of the song. Yeah, it does. 
Uh, that made me so mad when I heard that. That is infuriating. It's yeah. infuriating. It's the same as it's as infuriating people. as Wendy's doing surge pricing. Ridiculous. I'm so I like mad about like, that. Let's see how this goes. Like just floating the idea out there. Yeah, you're gonna figure it out real fast. Oh, I was talking to about. Okay, we'll get to yeah. the buffets. Yeah, 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 I was you're, talking you're to about yeah, yeah, today. Yeah, yeah. Because where we are right now in the global timeline, this is in the zeitgeist in this moment. This story dropped, I think, yesterday, and okay. everybody's going nuts about it right now. And a woefully misguided friend of mine went, well, that sounds great. They'll make it cheaper in off hours. Come on, man. Yeah, you really think they're going to work? That's how the surge pricing is going to work. They're going to reverse surge. By the way, a reverse surge is when you throw up that late nighty soda. <laughs> that's called having a reverse surge that is a reverse surge By the way, if, if people are listening to this episode going you already did best buffet section we did we decided yeah, we did best the section. section was the best yeah yeah section is different than a food because there may have been a single dish in one of the non-winning sections just because the section's mm-hmm. not as good it's got yeah. yeah it's got maybe the best food but it's not the best section so now we get to talk about individual dishes now this could be anything from a breakfast smorgasbord Mm -hmm. to a lunch buffet, to a dinner buffet. It could be any of those. Well, I have, if you will allow me, as is off to the case, Mm -hmm. I have a way that I think would be fun for us to approach this subject. It's a new way that I don't know that we've ever done before. Mm -hmm. And I would love to would think that we might go section by section and pull our finalists out of that. You uh-huh. would think that. You would potentially think that. But guess what? In this case, you would be incorrect. Here's how Good I would work. like to do this. I have in front of me a list of mostly superlatives. And those are going to form our categories for the finale. Now, mostly superlatives, I say, because a couple of them, I'll blow those right now, which is a couple of the categories are specialty buffets. And that would be the breakfast buffet and the dessert buffet. I'd like to talk about those separately, but I have a list of superlatives that I think would be fun to pick the best one out of each of those and then take those for it into the finals. How does that sound? I'm very interested. By the way, what percentage of meat at a bad buffet do you think is cat meat? Um, At a bad buffet? 100%. No, uh, at a bad buffet, it's people meat because I've been to Mrs. Lovett's Swingney Borg. <laughs> it's a Swedish musical theater based human meat pie smorgasbord. Oh, I can't. Only half the audience gets to leave. <laughs> uh, well, with the price of meat, what it is when you get it, if you get it good, you got mm-hmm. it. They'll serve anyone, meaning anyone <laughs> and to anyone. anyone. Yeah. Uh, well, I was on TV as a little priest, so maybe they'd serve <laughs> me in there. All right. I will tell you the categories that I have, and then we'll go one by one, and we'll each throw in what we think are some contenders in each of okay. these individual categories. Sound good? Sure. All I'm right. Interested. Here are the categories that I have. Safest, obviously, because Ooh. you're going to be going to buffets, and I think that's a big part of it. That's the least fun of the categories having to think about health and safety. Like everybody that has a job that has to fill out those OSHA things online. You got to every once in a while do those compliance trainings. This is we got this compliance training is doing mm. the safest buffet item category. Then we have comfiest, fanciest. Comfiest? Like most comfiest. Comfort? Okay. comfort food. Yeah, yeah, okay. Comfiest, fanciest, fanciest. best surprise. Okay. Safest, obviously, as mentioned. Breakfast and dessert are going to be our specialty buffets. And then, because technically you're not supposed to take buffet food with you, but as you and I have both been on the road together, we know that both of us do it. Sneakiest. Happens. The best sneaking food. Best uh, sneak it out of the buffet food. Okay. And then best decoy. The food that everyone else is going to go to while we're getting the good stuff. <laughs> Where would you like to start? Oh, I, let's just do them in the order that you gave them. I don't remember. I was bouncing around on my notes. So let's uh, start with safest. 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 We'll start first. with safest. It's the safest thing to start with. So I've got a few on my list. Some of these might show up on multiple lists, by the way. Shrimp. Which gives them a few ways to make their way into final contention. Did you just say shrimp as the safest? <laughs> he's giggling while he says it. Is it shrimp? There's no way that seafood <laughs> is anywhere near the safest. Scallops. You know what else is not anywhere near the safest that what? you would think would be? 
Salads. No, salads are the worst, of course. Yeah. It's just, it's the E. coli station. Yeah, yeah. But surprisingly, one of the safest, fresh fruit. Why? Which surprised me. I don't know, but uh, it turns out just in my research online, fresh fruit is one of those safer choices. Maybe it more often gets washed. It's cut fresh. It's, you know, it's like put out that day. It's put or put out that morning. I think of that as more of a breakfast buffet thing, too. So maybe it also has the benefit of being out for a shorter period of time. Hmm. Hard boiled eggs high up on the list of safe. If they're in the shell. If they're in, in the shell, of course. And uh pizza. Super safe. Unless it's been sitting out for a long time. Look, man, I'm just telling you what in my research I've discovered to be the safest things on a buffet. Oh, uh, so- I know your I know your opinion of this, which is nothing is safe. Yeah. You're saying Joe Internet thinks that the botulism disc is the safest food? <laughs> <laughs> no, the you botulism the botulism discs are the uh sliced water chestnuts in the salad bar. <laughs> I thought they were the discs that everybody was throwing around in Tron. <laughs> Botulism discs for everyone. Yeah. yeah. It's just as dangerous as the light Sid skulls. <laughs> what about the ice cream from the machine? Ice machine cream ice from the machine. I imagine that's pretty safe. If it's, it's pretty safe. in a machine. Yeah, sure. I mean, it's not going to come out hot. If it comes out hot, it'll just be milk. You know what? That's actually a really, that's funny. That's a really, a really good point. Uh, mm-hmm. one of the things that I kept coming across was as long as it's cooked, nothing raw, but frozen and directly out of a machine. Yeah. Is arguably the safest. But are we, now here's my question. Are mm-hmm. we looking for in each of these superlatives? Mm-hmm. Like, do you want to look for the safest food or do you want to look for the best food on the safe list? I think the superlative is safest. It's not the superlative. That's true. That's true. The superlative is safest. So I think what I think what we're going to do is have a fun time filling out the buffet yearbook. And one of them is going to clearly be the correct answer. But we'll get there. I like this way. I like this journey to get there. Yeah. I would say ice cream. I would follow that up with something from the hot carving station Mm because they have to keep that hot. Although. After a while, it looks like it has been made of pl- – like you can tell – like I love I love a prime rib. I absolutely mm-hmm. love a prime rib. If there's roast beef and I know they're going to slice it too thin, it's like they're teasing you. It's going to be a real slice and mm-hmm. they cut it through so that it's practically transparent at the bottom. Not good. I will do like I'm at a blackjack table and be like, hit me, hit me, hit me until I feel like there's <laughs> enough meat on the plate. But very quickly, it dries out. That's yeah. the problem. It dries out. It's not – I don't know if that makes it unsafe, but it is not pleasant to eat. So I would go with an ice cream. Yeah, I think I think sit, soft serve. Sit out. Yeah, there's one thing like salad in and of itself is prone to like some vegetable you love is being recalled every single week because of yeah. coli or something else is going on with it. It's heartbreaking, heartbreaking, heartbreaking. Yeah, this is why you never eat vegetables. Be like, <laughs> be like me who takes pills <laughs> every day. Something that doesn't sit out is inherently going to be safer because the other threat is everybody else who is gross. Mm-hmm. Especially yeah, children. There are so many X factors in a buffet. Yeah. Yeah. I came across one story online of a woman who just decided to forego the scoops and was just reaching with her hand for those Sunday toppings. Yeah, like, of course, people do that. That's not a mm-hmm. thing. Yeah. Uh, I know I mentioned this in the last episode. I'm sure that's my rule at uh, Yogurt Land and Menchie's is nothing out of the front row. Now nothing you can't- out of the front row. I saw into a yogurt land recently. I haven't gone into one because I'm like, I don't want I, for that exact reason. Like mm-hmm. I've been there before in my heyday. I would mm-hmm. go and I'd be like, oh, please let me decide what I want and get the ice cream faster than those kids. Cause yep. number one, their hands are filthy. Number two, they're going to take 500 hours to decide what they want. I mm-hmm. know what I'm getting. I know, I know exactly what's going on here. Yeah. So let me cook. Let me cook, yeah. bro. Plain tart and a single gummy worm, right? That's what you do. That's, yeah. Just one. But I, yeah. I spent a lot of time posing it. <laughs> um, but I, when I, I saw into yogurt land recently and they were asking for toppings and the person was scooping them. The, the they do that at, yeah, they do. I've seen both currently. They're, yeah. they both still exist, but I have seen, which I think is way safer. And I love that. Mm-hmm. I would also say anything that's made to order. Oh, omelet. I mean, the omelet station is going to be on our list, I think, because when we start talking about the breakfast buffet specifically. Yeah. But yeah, I think the omelet is you're watching that thing sizzle up. There is it's going from chef directly to you. So Mm -hmm. a made to order omelet is probably pretty safe. Fun to watch. Yeah. But also eggs can be bad. Eggs can be rotten. Yeah, but I don't think that you're going to be. I've never in my life eaten a rotten egg. And I've eaten. I got thousands of eggs. I, we've talked about how much scrambled eggs is like a favorite food of mine. Oh, yeah. 
Well, I got food poisoning from scrambled eggs at a diner once. So it can oh, happen. Really? Yeah. Yeah. I didn't, I've never gotten, uh, did you, how did you have them scrambled? Yeah. Soft scramble or soft? I only like soft. I don't like hard scrambled. Yeah. That's why. Cause it wasn't, still wasn't a like little bit of drinking it. Yeah. This is a little runny, but it wasn't, yeah. it wasn't an undercooked egg. It was mm-hmm. something's wrong with it. You know, the, I still remember. Yeah. Like I, I can't, I'm not the kind of actor who can like fry on cue, but mm-hmm. I can remember if you want to talk about sense memory, I remember the sharp pain in my stomach when I got sick. Oh man. Anytime, like, if you've ever yeah. had food poisoning, it's, mm-hmm. you know, ex- you know exactly what is happening. You're like, Oh, there it is. That's food poisoning. There is, it is unmistakable what you're dealing with. Oof. I also remember having a fever mm-hmm. in like high school mm-hmm. and I was laying in bed and I, I saw a guy come into my room with a giant ax and a head and put the head down and then walked out. And I could only assume in that hallucination that that was a guard and there was a problem at the door. <laughs> <laughs> and and the, that the guy was like, took care of it for you. Your majesty, go back to sleep. Yeah. I was like, oh, this sucks. Why can't I just sleep this off? So are we taking the omelet out and going with the soft serve ice cream I as the, the safest? I think the soft serve ice cream is right. the safest. All right. Do you agree? I think that, you know what? I think that's, I think that's a good one. It's funny that our very first one, we're going to do a uh, breakfast and dessert buffet thing later. And our very first one was a breakfast one and a dessert one. And you know, the brunch buffet is so ubiquitous. Mm -hmm. It's a huge, yeah. Well, every hotel has the breakfast buffet, the good ones do. Yeah. That aren't hoity toity. Yeah. But even, yeah, the non hoity toity hotel that has the one was, we'll talk about it. We remember yeah. it from our uh, Night Vale days. Yes. All right. Why don't we jump to comfiest? What's a good buffet comfort food? Now, I realize this is hard for you, Hal, what I'm about to ask. Hmm. I want to, now that we've discussed safest, I want to take that. I want to take, I don't want to take it off the table as a consideration, but I want to drop it low because otherwise every food we mention is going to be, nope. It's gross. Nope. Someone sneezed on it. I had an answer immediately. What's that? I had an idea, like what I personally think. I don't know if it's the best. Okay. If it's the most comfy. I have four on my list. To me, it's mashed potatoes and gravy. Yeah, that's what I've got. I've got mashed potatoes and gravy, uh, mac and cheese, a good casserole size mac and cheese. Yeah, but I like it creamy. Stuffing can be hit or miss, though. Yeah, I think stuffing, like I'm always on the lookout for mushroom. People put mushroom in there. Oh, and I don't like yeah. That. Yeah. So I don't, that makes I don't, tough. I'm so specific that it's, I'll try it. I definitely want to try it, but mm-hmm. it's always a sad day when I find a mushroom in there because it yeah. just brings the whole thing down for me, man. Fair. And our winner, the other one that I had was our winner from the best section, and that is soups. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Chicken noodle soup. soup. From a buffet. Love a good chicken noodle soup. Love a good chili in the soup section. There's a good yeah. chili in there. Yeah. Chili's good. Yeah. Mashed potatoes I mean, and gravy is tough because it's two for one. You get two. Yeah. And you get a little bit of that gravy on whatever you, you, do you strategically place what is going to be near the mashed potatoes? Well, if it's, you know, I work in phases. We've talked about this before. I'll do mm-hmm. like my first round. If there's mashed potatoes and gravy on the plate, everything else there goes with mashed potatoes and gravy. So it's like turkey okay. or roast beef and then peas or green beans and mm-hmm. the gravy goes on everything. Yeah. Everything. For me, the gravy goes on the mashed potatoes. And if it goes on anything else, it's going on accidentally, but as a nice surprise. Right. Yeah. You, you separate, you like the food dams. Oh yeah. I, I I napkin dammed my food as a kid. Yeah. Of course. Yeah. Yeah. Prison tray. Just give me a prison tray. Give me a prison tray. That's That's all I want. Or the kids plates. Yeah. Exactly. Divide it up. Give me a sectioned kid cuisine. That's what I want. So I think we're, yeah, I think mashed potatoes and gravy is coming from the comfiest. Wow. Why don't we take a quick break? And then when we come back, we'll go through these other categories and we will determine once and for all the greatest buffet food. How's that sound, Hal? Delicious. Ooh, we'll be right back. Hi, this is Biz, and this is the final season of One Bad Mother, a comedy podcast about parenting. This is going to be a year of celebrating all that makes this podcast and this community magical. I'm so glad that I found your podcast. I just cannot thank you enough for just being the voice of reason as I'm trying to figure all of this out. Thank you and cheers to your incredible show and the vision you had to provide this space for all of us. This is still a show about life after giving life. And yes, there will be swears. You can find us on MaximumFun.org. And as always, you are doing a great job. 
All right, class, tomorrow's exam will cover the extinction and de-extinction of the dodo, PowerPoint as an art form, and the history of Eurovision. Any questions? Uh, yes, you in the back. Uh, what is this? It's the podcast Let's Learn Everything, where we learn about science and a bit of everything else. My name's Tom. I study cognitive and computer science, but I'll also be your teacher for intermediate emojis. My name's Caroline, and I did my master's in biodiversity conservation, and I'll be teaching you intro to things the British Museum stole. My name's Ella. I did a PhD in stem cell biology, so obviously I'll be teaching you the history of fan fiction. Class meets every other Thursday on Maximum Fun. So do I still get credit for this? <laughs> no. no. <laughs> obviously not. No. It's a podcast. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Next category fanciest that's when you go to the buffet and you think to yourself what's the thing that i'm going to get here that's going to make it worth the 50 bucks that i paid to come to this buffet well that's a different thing right that's most expensive seeming yeah which is i put fanciest and most expensive as the same thing like my first thought was like a rack of lamb like rack of lamb pieces yeah feels very with the mint jelly which i never does that would you not think that that would be probably the more expensive thing on the buffet well, yeah, probably would. Prime rib yeah. is ex- like really none of it is expensive. We all know the great hack is to buy it yourself at like a yeah. Costco or or your local sure. grocer and then make it, and it's way cheaper. Mm-hmm. But usually the rack of lamb has the little chef's hats on the bone. I like the rack, that's of pretty lamb. fancy. It's wearing clothes, right? It is wearing clothes, and there's seafood too. But I feel like the seafood is like here's a pile of legs. Here's a pile of fish. fish Look, that items. well, this is now this is when I get to this is when I come back to king crab legs because mm-hmm. I think that king crab legs are if you are such a fancy buffet item that there are buffets that don't even let you get that in an all you can eat setting that yeah. that one is given to you in a like oh no 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 if you want this you got to get a ticket for this. It's an e-ticket food. It is an e-ticket food. That's the only e-ticket food so far that we've come across. That is true. And that I think is, I think that's specific to Chinese buffets, at least in my experience, hmm. is the king crab legs. Well, I've seen, I've seen them. I mean, certainly Vegas has them too. Any seafood, if they have a big seafood section. They'll be there. I've seen it at a number of buffets. Yeah. It is a particular delicacy because there's a lot of seafood in Asian cuisine. Mm-hmm. So you're, you have a better chance of finding them there. I understand them as fancy in terms of how expensive they are, which is why mm-hmm. you require, you must be this tall to eat. Snow King Snow Crab John Snow Crab Legs. Yeah. You know nothing, King Crab. <laughs> Butter is coming. Let me say that again. Let me t- uh let me edit that. You know nothing, John Snow Crab. That's better. <laughs> Live edits. <laughs> I think the legs are I I've never seen the presentation to the point where it feels fancy. It's just like Here's a bunch of legs, and don't forget, you need the weird pla- – like, would you like a plastic bib with that? Yeah. And a plastic fork to put in there? Like, everything about eating it feels like they are turning you into a child. Here's a little digging mm-hmm. tool. You got to try and get the meat out, and then there's weird two little bones on the inside. Jennifer likes – or liked crab legs. She might still. Yeah. We haven't been to a buffet in a long time, but she would get it, and I would be like, that is not – the juice ain't worth the squeeze on that. Because it's a mm-hmm. relatively small amount of meat <laughs> for something that looks like a gigantic spider's leg. Now, let me ask you this. You have mentioned a couple of times. I realized as we were talking, I have talked about king crab legs this whole time. And you've talked yeah. about snow crab legs. Which ones are, are the you, big ones? King crab? They're, the snow crab legs are the smaller and mostly red ones. The oh, king I crab legs are the big, spiny, white, uh, red and white That's the one ones. I'm talking about. I'm talking okay. about those, the big ones. They never yeah. seem to have enough meat in them. Yeah. For the amount of work you have to do. And they have little, yeah, they're, they're very dangerous. They're, and here's the thing. Look, I appreciate that they are a fancy dish. They are about $75 a pound for crab legs, for king crab legs, which is probably why they are, you have to have the ticket to get them. That said, they take up so much table real estate. Yeah. You know what I mean? And once you're done with them, because the thing is, you get these plates that pile up if you're going to a buffet and you got multiple plates. And if they're not coming around and picking those plates up fast enough, you are trying to eat your smothered in gravy course when there's still the husk of a king crab sitting on the table looking back at you. You know what I mean? Yeah. It's like a bunch of dead face hugger aliens are on your table. You're just waiting for someone to it like takes up a ton of real estate. It's tough to get in there. There's Mm -hmm. not enough meat inside. And it's super expensive. I don't know that there's not enough meat inside. 
there's not enough meat inside for the amount of detritus right. left over on the table after. And relative to the effort it takes to get it out. Yeah. But really the idea of a food being expensive or mm-hmm. a delicacy is completely manufactured. You know, lobster used to be a food given to prisoners, right? Yeah. <laughs> like, yeah. And now to get a, a main lobster, it's market price. You yeah. don't know what you're going to pay for it, but it's like a expensive. Wendy's hamburger. Like a Wendy's ham, depending on the time you get there. It's market price. It changes. MP. Hey, you need to eat this on the way to the airport. It's going to cost more. <laughs> That's the way it is. Well, let me ask you this then. I also had sushi rolls on my list of fanciest because that seems to me like an indulgent fancy thing to me. It does, but it also is something people get in plastic containers at Ralph's. Very good point. I think this one's going to come down to one question. Mm-hmm. I think that the winner of the fanciest is most likely there is going to be a paper hat involved. Now, is that paper hat being worn by a chef carving Mm -hmm. prime rib at a station? Yeah. Or are lots of paper hats going to be worn by the rack of lamb? Oh, which any, which paper hat food is going to be the fanciest? Any food wearing a hat has got to be the fanciest. The food itself is wearing the hat. Yeah. Yeah. With love to prime rib, I think crowned rack of lamb is going to have to win this because the food is wearing a hat. Yes. Very fancy. All right. So we have so far, we've got mashed potatoes, rack of lamb and soft serve ice cream on the (laughs) list. All right. I'm going to jump now to best surprise or most surprising. Here I've got a few, Hal. I think there are a couple. Uh Here's one major criteria for this one. And really the only criteria for this one is it is the thing that you walk into the buffet, you see it, and you go, ooh, that is the one criteria for this one. I'm going to give you a few possibilities. Surprise and delight. Surprise and delight, yes. Uh, No, no, no. The most surprising would be like a rat, but that's not delightful. It's still not get food. Some pizza. Yeah, it's just to get some pizza. Look, man, it's New York City. All right, here are some surprises. Mm. And th- I'm, we're going to go, we're going to take a little trip around the world. Famously oh, like in Istanbul, Oyster Station. Buffet Oyster Station. I love oysters. In the same way you'd have a prime rib station, there is a chef there shucking oysters. The second they're shucked, they go down. I'm, you're not a huge oyster fan. Just the sound of it being eaten yeah, makes I love it the oysters. grossest food on the planet. How about this? James Beard Award winning chef Gerard Kraft in St. Louis. Has, this one make me, this one may not make me go, ooh, but it would make me go, oh my God, huh. which is a whole animal roast. So like if you went into a buffet and there was a chef standing behind a whole pig on a spit with an apple in its mouth, that's Mm-mm. surprising. It is, but I don't want to see, I wouldn't be delighted. I don't want to see, I don't need to see the face of what I'm eating. Oh, well, then you're going to love this one. At Plaza Brasserie in Singapore, they have a live station. Yeah. Which is a big tank. You pick what you want. They just yank it out and prep it for you. That's called a zoo, Mark. Or an aquarium. (laughs) Or an aquarium. (laughs) Yeah, it's a live cooking station of the Pacific. Yeah, this is, I mean, I could go pick out. Mm, That rhinoceros looks tasty. How much? Now, this might not be terribly surprising because Mm. it is in several good buffets, great buffets. But I think the one that makes me go, ooh, the most, Mm -hmm. Chocolate Fountain. Oh, yeah. That is a delight. I think Chocolate Fountain might be a surprise delight. It is the grossest, filthiest. But if you can get there early, I've been indulged in a Chocolate Fountain many a time. Yeah. All right. Yeah. I got to go chocolate fountain on that one. Yeah, I'm with you. All right. Okay, let's go next to... What do we have left? Oh, we have sneakiest. Here's my vote for sneakiest. This is specifically from our days traveling with Welcome to Night Vale. We would always Uh stay at a certain hotel chain. They're great. They have free Wi-Fi and a free breakfast buffet. And the thing they always want to market them. (laughs) Do I want to marketing? I don't want to buzz market. They're not paying us anything. Should I? I'll say it. No, no, no. Don't. Okay, good. I won't. They get nothing. But the one thing that I would always take with me, I think I may have mentioned this on a different episode on our buffet episode. One thing I always like to take with me from those is hard boiled eggs. Stuff my pockets with some hard boiled eggs. Smelly farts. Smelly. Yeah. Smelly farts for the whole sprinter van ride to our next city. Smelly farts. 
Yeah, that's because you cook them too long and they they release sulfur. If the yeah. yolk is gray, that means the sulfur's kicked in. It's going to smell like a fart. So if the yolk is gray, it's not okay? That's right. If the yolk is yellow, it's a jolly good fellow. Great. But my vote would go to the English muffin. This is a combo. It's a threefer. The English muffin. This Again, with the breakfast. It's All of these are breakfast buffet things, it seems. The English muffin, the little packet of peanut butter, and the little packet of jam. I can sneakily stuff a backpack with napkin-wrapped English muffins and a bunch of those peanut butter and jams. And guess what? I got PB&Js for the whole day, my friend. I would. Why are you say, shaking your head? I would say the easiest thing to sneak uh-huh. is a cookie. Cookie's super easy to sneak. Oh, that's true. Yeah. Because you could bring it like, oh, but we also, we, it's dessert. not just about the sneaking. It's about the discovery and use later on. I'm getting there. Okay. So you got that. Mm -hmm. An apple would be second. Actually, an orange would be second because it has yeah. a protective layer. So it has its own case. That's then true. an apple. Yeah. What if it's an apple in a tiny apple briefcase? Love it. And then you have it handcuffed on like it's the football. Yeah. Great. And then the other is banana. Banana yeah. is the weakest of these because it'll smush up if you don't store it properly. The other two, you can store however you want. The cookie might crumble. Listen, if you sneak out a banana properly, you're going to get some people shade tipping at you as you walk out of the restaurant. <laughs> going, mmm. Yeah, I think fruit's pretty high up there. Yeah. Yeah, I think you're right in that it should be something that doesn't require anything else. The English muffin is great, but it requires a napkin. You know what yeah. I mean? Something that's not going to require you to use any other. What if it's a place with cloth napkins? What are you, my grandmother, who was a delightful, wonderful woman who used to go and get the unlimited breadsticks at the Olive Garden, and she would wrap them in the cloth napkins at the Olive Garden and stuff them in her purse so they wouldn't grease up her purse. But you don't want to have to use an extra accessory. In or I'm sorry I put you on blast there. Uh, she is, God rest her soul, she is no longer with us, so she can no longer be arrested for this. She was a depression baby. Absolutely she depression, depression baby. She yeah, around, so yeah. there you go. That's yeah. uh, That generation, there are many people who would have done that. Just yeah, from of course. Force to have it. They don't know when they're could happen again. Got to you. Got to be able to stock up, and you just learn to forage. I've done it too, and I don't have an excuse. Well, you're Mark Agliardi. I'm a Great Recession baby. Does that count? Yeah, I was around for the Great Recession. You were. Yeah, I think it's going to be fruit. So between the apple, the or I think the orange has to win. Yeah, because the banana is too easy to damage. The apple's got that skin. It's unless it comes in the case, which it rarely does. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think it's got to be the orange. All right. Yeah. An orange is coming out of the sneakiest and best decoy food. That's our, uh, no, no, no. We have two, we have the, uh, the two special ones after that. But, uh, <laughs> what do you think? Seth? What, the, this is what the best decoy food is going to be. It's not going to win the episode. Obviously, yeah. it's going to be the first one eliminated, probably. But what's the food that everybody goes for? And you're like, fool's gold, man. Oh, suckers. Yeah. You know what I'm going to guess on that one? Mm. Bread station. Oh yeah, bread, bread is a, station. That is a fool's errand. You're filling up. Why would you fill up on bread when there's a prime rib station right over there and a guy in a hat giving it to you? You know what else? What's that? In a brunch buffet, mm -hmm. the potatoes, the home, uh, not home fries. The one there's like home fries. Yeah, it's home fries. The home fries is yeah, the uh, the potato cubed potatoes, pepper and onion. Yeah, that's no, that's I don't, I don't know though. I don't know Close though because food. there are places that can make that really well. Yeah. You know what I mean? The bread's really good, too, at some of these places. Yeah, but bread is generally bread, you know? I mean, a waffle's different. Waffle's not bread. I'll get a waffle. I like a waffle, but that waffle station takes way too much time. Yeah. You That's like seven minutes of me pouring from a paper cup, flipping the little machine over, and then standing there waiting while everyone else is scooping up all the good bacon. Well, not every person you get your bacon first, and then it's waiting for the waffle. Yeah. You're never going to eat food warm at a buffet. You just have to make your peace with that. But I've definitely yeah, close been, the cloche, people. You're just waiting for someone to. Yeah. You start hovering around the cloches you're interested in and waiting for them yeah. to come and refill the chafing dish for you. I'm going bread station on this. Yeah. I think bread station is I think a, bread. That's yeah. cool there. I would add pasta to that too, but some people like pasta as their main. So I get it. Yeah. And, and you know what? Yeah. It's anything that's going to fill you up and anything that you would get take too big a quantity of. You know what I mean? As yeah. well. And hey, if you're getting fettuccine Alfredo at a buffet, do yourself a favor and just eat it while you're sitting on the toilet. Save yourself time. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I hate that idea. 
Uh-huh. Uh, yeah, your the toilet is om- the toilet too. is for Amatriciana. That's the only pasta you're supposed to eat on the toilet. What is that? Is it toilet paper? Amatriciana. Uh, it's a Roman. Uh, it's got some peppers in it. So you know, burn right through you. Oh. Okay. Now let's go to the two, which we've already actually got victors from these categories. Okay. Uh, but we're gonna see if anyone gets a double. The breakfast buffet. So far, I think ice cream has already come out of the safest category but it's not the best food at a buffet it's never the best it's not even the best dessert no 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 no. i'm talking about well but but we're talking i'm moving us to breakfast now and the only other contender in that was the omelet bar i think this is the moment for the omelet bar to shine what do you think i like an omelet bar i do like an omelet bar if you don't like waiting for a waffle though once you get like three people deep in an omelet bar you got a good four hours before you get your food and you keep watching because sometimes people get like some of the same ingredients as you. Mm-hmm. So you see it go and you're like, Oh, I think that's me. Yeah. And then it's not. I like the show of it though, because yeah. I may stand there and talk because it's unlike the waffle. The waffle iron is closed. It's not letting me see what's happening in there. And I can't talk to the waffle iron. You can. If you get a good affable omelet bar chef yeah. who has got three or four pans going at once and they're they're kind of like they're like the mayor of the breakfast. You know what I mean? Yeah. I love that. I think it's a lot of fun. Sure. I will also say another great one is the kanji bowl. I think I've mentioned this before. Kanji bowl is a rice porridge, Asian rice porridge, and it's or, or like imagine like you would an oatmeal station with, you know, where there's brown sugar and nuts and, and dried cranberries or whatever and you can kind of make your own bowl of oatmeal. Now imagine that rice porridge and savory. So it's all savory toppings that are going in there. I've seen, you know, garlic, shredded chicken, assorted vegetables. Yeah, I love it. I love a kanji bowl. But I think the omelet's got to win this one. Yeah, I mean, I get an omelet because I it feels like the thing to do. It's fun to see it made. What else on the breakfast buffet is... Honestly, a malted Belgian waffle that they're making and putting out, you get to see it come out fresh because they're making them and flipping them. You have to do it yourself. You don't know how to, how much to pour. The batter's getting all over you. It's sticking to it because you, somehow you both cooked it too long and not long enough. Like you don't, you know, we're idiots when it comes to making waffles. Yeah. Most of us, we don't know how to do it. And when someone else makes it, it's so good. And I guess this goes to you and I being different in the sweet breakfast versus savory breakfast. I never have sweet breakfast. Maybe mm. annually. Sweet breakfast. That's good. Sweet breakfast. Love a sweet breakfast. So when you go to International House of Pancakes, you just get a salt lick? No, I get an omelet. They have good omelets. I always get the same thing usually when I go to a diner, which is at the standard, you know, bacon and eggs and hash browns and toast. Wow. Yeah, I got a, I, I think I, in the main, Mark. Yeah, no, I know. Oh. If there was the International House of Omelets, it'd be the... <laughs> <laughs> That's Mar. That's Mario Mario's. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> By the way, I like that you used his full name. Well, Mario course. Mario of the Mario Brothers. So is it? They, I'm, that's such a specific. A buckwheat waffle. No, no, malted. Like it's just a oh, waffle. malted. They're malted. They're just like the waffle they put out. The Belgian waffle. However, whatever they malted do, Belgian. I sorry, I thought you said buckwheat. Uh, in my so brain, good. that's what it no, translates. I've never. Had, that's very specific. That is very Where, specific. You think I? You think I buy food at Erewhon? Nah, man. Look, I. <laughs> I went to an Erewhon once and I was like, oh my God, I just spent $40 on my own lunch. And it is a walk-up counter. Yeah, it's the only grocery store with a cover charge. For me, it's the addition of the mayor of the room at the omelet bar. I love a breakfast. An omelet. You're not eating the person, are you, Mark? No, no, but I love the omelet. I'm all, there's something special to me about, that becomes the centerpiece of the breakfast buffet if I get an omelet. If the chef is a jackass, are you still going to enjoy the omelet? Yeah. That doesn't matter. I know you like a show. I like the a one show. one that's a show you like. Yeah. But also, also, I like an omelet because there's also so many options. You know what I don't have at home? A bunch of tiny cut up vegetables in front of me and the ability to just give a little bam to each of them or however many of them I want. You get to make it exactly how you want it. I get that you like a waffle, but a waffle is a waffle. It's plain. You can add stuff to it later, but there's something I think special about a sizzling hot pan right there in front of you. You like a carving station? This is even better than a carving station because this is a hot pan with all kinds of different stuff. You get to basically choose your own adventure, your own cooking show in that moment. Well, also, I will point out with a waffle, Mm -hmm. 
that you can top it however you want. So you wind up customizing it anyway. And I don't just, I, I don't just get it, put it on my plate and eat it like it's a hamburger with, <laughs> with like fervor. I'm not yeah. doing that. No, there isn't a piece of customization to carving station for mm-hmm. sure. And a lot of the times the people there, some of them are nice. You've seen that training video, right? From like the eighties of the guy who's clearly from the Illinois area is like, Nice weather we're having, right? Because they're teaching you how to make small talk with people. Have you decided what dessert you're going to have? Oh, I haven't seen this, but this is delightful. Yeah, it's really, uh, if you walked into that buffet, the second they were like, do you know what dessert you're going to have? I would turn around and leave. You know why? None of your business. Yeah. Policing my food. Yeah, I have issues around it. I've talked about it in therapy. Yeah, get off my butt, Jenny Craig. I'm going to eat whatever the heck I want while I'm here. And why is Jenny Craig running the carving station? It seems like a bad choice. See, yeah. And she's slicing it so thin that you can see through it. That's why Hal's standing there saying, hit me, hit me, hit me. Yeah. And she's going, you're fine. Yeah. Get out of here with that. You're fine. I'm at a buffet. If I'm at a buffet, I'm not counting that day. (laughs) If I'm a person who counts calories, guess what? It's a cheat day if I'm at a buffet. You lost your calculator all of a sudden. All right. I'm fine with the omelet going through. I don't think the omelet's the best buffet food, but... No. I know it's important to you that it win brunch, and I'm happy with that. I do love that. I appreciate that. I enjoy it. I enjoy an omelet. Why not? And then for dessert, what's the best thing on the dessert buffet? Really, the ones that I had were the Sunday Station and the Chocolate Fountain, and it's both of those station. have already... The Sunday Station. It's the, the Sunday dessert. Station. Yeah. And really, you if they have a decent brownie, which they rarely do, like like they make every dessert wrong. It's some mm-hmm. weird, like, sweeted version of a chocolate chip cookie. <laughs> Did you just throw down with sweeted from yeah. Be Kind Rewind? <laughs> yes. Amazing. Or like a, a like an alien came to Earth and you're like, this is what a brownie is. And they're like, I got it. And then they try to make one and it's just not quite right. Yeah. Like it has the dimensions of a brownie. It's just not. I was like, it's like this is just a small piece of chocolate cake. You know this is not what a brownie yeah. is supposed to be. And the cake's not good. Like, just generally bad. Yeah, but make your own Sunday, thing. Do your own thing. The Sunday station. Sunday's easy. You take like a vanilla or chocolate ice cream. You dress it up with syrup and some toppings, some stale mini marshmallows on there that turn into ghosts when you bite into them, and you're good. <laughs> All right, Hal. Listen, mm. here's what we've got in front of us. Okay, I've got a bunch of different. All of our victors. This particular graduating buffet class of 2024. But I think we both know who the victor is. Do you think the best food is among these? Yes. I don't think we need to lead them all out loud. Well, I think we need to play pomp and circumstance underneath while we give the superlative awards. I, I, do you, do you, wait. Just let me do (laughs) this bit. You let me do do this bit. bit. Quickly, quickly. Go ahead. I'll I'll allow it. Go ahead. All right. Attention class of 2024. Can put in pomp and circumstance. Keep talking, Mark. Here at Buffet High School, go BHS. Fighting salmonellas. The winner for safest is the soft serve ice cream. The winner for sneakiest is the orange. The winner for best decoy is the bread. The winner for comfiest is mashed potatoes. The winner of best surprise is the chocolate fountain. And the winner of fanciest is the only food that wears a hat. And that is the crowned rack of lamb. Do we think we have our victor within this list? How? I do think it's in there. Mm Mm-hmm. Should I say what I think it is? And then tell me if you think, if that's what you think it is, too? It's the only one that won two. It's not ice cream. I mean, I thought that's what you were going to say. My first inclination, what I was going to say was, look, man, there's only one food that wears a hat. Oh, oh, I don't think it's the best. I think it's What do you think is the best? I think mashed potatoes and gravy. Get out of here. So good. Mashed potatoes and gravy? Yeah. Simple. Mm. Best doesn't have to be fanciest. Best doesn't have to be the most surprising. Sometimes best is, there is like an element of when you go to a buffet, you are seeking comfort in some way. Yeah. All right. Mm. How do you feel about that? Or do you think it's something we haven't mentioned at all? No, I think it's, when you put it that way, keep selling. Keep selling. I'm, I'm, I'm warming to mashed potatoes on this. Because I was thinking about the food wearing the hat, and I was like, you know what? It might not be the best. It might just be the fanciest right. because of the hat. Yeah, Ice cream has won two categories. It won both yeah. safest and best dessert. Right. But the best food – like I love – here's what I like about mashed potatoes is mm-hmm. you can put a ton of it on your plate or a little bit, and it's good. It can mm-hmm. be like a pureed 
potato or it can have little chunks of potato in it and be kind of unfinished. And they're both really good. And it works with no matter what meat you're getting, it will work with it. It works with seafood. It works with especially with gravy. It's good with turkey and roast beef and ham, too. It's good with all of it. Like potatoes just sort of go with everything. And generally, I've come to the realization as I've been on a journey to lose weight that oftentimes potatoes are just fillers for me personally. Mm -hmm. And when I get them half of the time, I'm like, oh, I wish I hadn't gotten that. It's not the reward flavor wise wasn't enough for me. But I do love a mashed potato and, and gravy like paired together. Mashed potatoes on its own isn't great. And you can't just spoon gravy into your mouth. That is a depressive episode. But when you put them together. That's something magic that happens there. Whether you put it on top or whether you make a little well and then pour it in there, I think it's just – and there's something about the bite that you have from the first one to the last one, even after a little while, that's satisfying. Mm. That would be my pitch for it. That's a good pitch. I think that, yeah – look, I'm trying – because our job is to objectively answer subjective questions, I am – reluctant to choose in a world where if we're just looking at at it by the numbers, the ice cream sundae did win two of these out of all of them. Right. But I don't know that I've ever been to a buffet that didn't have mashed potatoes and gravy. I don't know that I've ever been to a buffet where I didn't take mashed potatoes and gravy on my plate. Mm -hmm. And I don't think I'm alone in this. Mm -mm. I think it has a certain ubiquity. I think it has a certain Comfiness, and I think you put it best when you said that if you're going to a buffet, you're going to reach for comfort food. And mashed potatoes definitely fits that bill. So, yeah, I'm comfy with it. All right. Well, people of the world, next time you go to a buffet, have fun dancing between the raindrops of food poisoning and other people's germs as you try to assemble your plate or plates, whatever floats your boat. But if you want the best buffet food, you won't find it in the soup section, which is the best section, of course, because of all the great soups that are there. The single greatest food in a buffet, surprise, surprise, is mashed potatoes and gravy. And in this case, it's the way it makes you feel when you dig into some mashed potatoes. I mean, come on. Mashed potatoes. How is that not the winner? How did it not be? Asked and answered. Thanks for saying it. Take that, mother. Go back and listen to our best as seen on TV episode. If you haven't heard it, I don't know what the episode number is. And this topic is closed, but there are many more topics to discuss. So please reach out to us via email at we got this podcast at gmail.com or go to our Facebook group, share your buffet victories and nightmares and pictures of the food that you like. Let's share the foods we like. I love when we all share things we like in that Facebook group. It's one of my favorite places in the internet. It is the kindest place in the internet. And it is at facebook.com slash groups slash we got this podcast. If you're not a member, request membership. Make sure you answer the questions so I know you are not a robot. And we'd love to have you there joining us. You can also find us on TikTok at we got this podcast and on Instagram at we got this show. I love uh, having our producer Ken Plume to Mm -hmm. drop in clips and music and all the other wonderful things he does to make this show the best it can possibly be. And you can support him directly and all the wonderful things he's doing at patreon.com slash Ken Plume. Oh, he said the clips are unavailable. He's fired, but he still has to do work for us. Thank you to researcher Kate McManus, graphic designer Uri Kelman, and QA engineer Jen Alba. And thanks, of course, to our musicians, Jonathan Dinerstein and Mike Furman for our score and theme song, respectively. And thanks to you, the people of the world. You give us this joy once a week to come together and talk about things that I love, that Hal used to love, and he is forsaking, like the buffet, and all kinds of other wonderful things. I would love to take all of you to a buffet. You are our crowned rack of lamb. You are the reason we do this. You are our comfort food. Thanks for making our Facebook group and this community the most fun place to argue on the internet. To you, we say thank you, thank you. Thank you. For Hal Lublin, I'm Mark Gagliardi. For Mark Gagliardi, I'm Hal Lublin. And don't worry, everybody. We We got got this. this. We got this. Maximum Fun, a worker-owned network of artist-owned shows supported directly by you.